Hello. Uh, sorry for the delay. We're trying to have some technical difficulties. Um, my name is Rich Angelo. I'm assistant engineer, uh, City Menlo Park Transportation Division. Um, with us tonight is, is Patrick Palmer, also in Transportation Division, and Nikki Nagaya, our Public Works Director. Um, tonight, we're going to be discussing, uh, Patrick, if you can bring up the, the beginning of the slide. Uh, we're discussing the Middle Avenue Complete Treats project. Um, we're going to start out with having a short video from the project manager, who is Esther Jones. She is out at right now uh, doing a corresponding uh, meeting in conjunction with ours um, at Neilon Park in person. Uh, I suppose we just reading out there, so we might have more people tonight. Um, but anyways, we're going to first start out with a short uh, video from Esther uh, that she made uh, for this project. And then we're going to get into uh, some questions and answers and some boards that, that were made to kind of describe what we're uh, looking for tonight in this meeting. Um, we're looking for input from the, from the community in regards to um, the intersection of El Camino Real at El Camino, um, but, uh, bicycle improvements, or, or transit improvement, more like, and then also uh, traffic calming measures possible. So there's going to be a survey. Uh, there's going to be a poll that uh, drop down menu that you can bring down uh, should be on your screen that will um, help answer some questions or ask some questions. Uh, so um, please feel free to to uh, ask a question after we're done, and we'll start this uh, video. Thank you. Patrick, you can start the video. Welcome to the first community meeting for Middle Avenue Complete Streets Project. My name is Esther Jung, Assistant Engineer at the City of Menlo Park Transportation Division. Tonight, we will be presenting various roadway as well as bicycle and pedestrian improvements proposal along the entire length of Middle Avenue between El Camino Real and Olive Street. Middle Avenue is an important part of the transportation network in the city of Menlo Park as it fronts Safeway Plaza, New Lawn and Lyle Parks, senior centers, preschool, and other community amenities. Children on bicycle use Middle Avenue as a route to Hillview and Oak Knoll schools, and other bicyclists use it to the bicycle bridge at the south end of San Mateo Drive to reach Stanford University. In 2013, the city endorsed complete street policy to establish sustainable and integrated transportation networks, allowing all users to move easily around the city, including people of all ages and abilities. And through the policy, numerous studies and plans have recommended changes to Middle Avenue. The city's Vision Zero policy under the general plan circulation element supports traffic safety improvements to eliminate traffic fatalities and reduce the number of non-fatal collisions. Also, this project complements two major projects, the Middle Avenue Pedestrian and Bicycle Rail Crossing Project, which is an infrastructure project that will provide a great separated pedestrian and bicycle facility to safely cross the Caltrain tracks. And the Middle Plaza Project at 500 El Camino Real bringing more than 200 housing units and almost 150,000 square feet of commercial offices and retail spaces. In anticipation of the completion of the Middle Avenue pedestrian and bicycle rail crossing and Middle Plaza, a series of bicycle improvements on Middle Avenue have been studied to provide better local connections. And as such, recently adopted transportation master plan established class two bicycle lanes for entire length of Middle Avenue between El Camino Real to Olive Street. Additionally, the city conducted a speed limit survey in 2020 and based on the observed speed and accident rates, El Camino Real to University Drive was reduced from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. During this approval, the City Council has directed staff to present options for traffic calming 
on Middle Avenue to achieve a 25 miles per hour zone in the rest of the corridor. And the city council has identified this traffic calming project as a high priority project. The Middle Avenue Complete Streets project will apply vision and goals identified in previous planning efforts to create sustainable and equitable street design. The goals of the project are to provide safe, comfortable, and convenient roadway for travel by automobile, foot, and bicycle. When implemented, the project will ensure that the right of way is designed for all users and increase accessibility for and use of streets by people walking, biking, driving, and taking transit. It will also support eliminating traffic fatalities and reduce the number of non-fatal collisions consistent with the city's Vision Zero policy. As for an overview of Middle Avenue today, there are about 7,000 cars passing through Middle near El Camino Real and about 5,000 cars toward Olive Street. The city right of way is about 65 feet and the roadway is approximately 42 feet wide with two vehicle lanes. There are edge lanes with parallel parking on both sides between University Drive and Olive Street. And there is no separation for bicyclists along entire stretch of Middle Avenue. The parking demand shifts from side to side due to varying land uses and characteristics along Middle Avenue. There are mostly single family homes on the south side of the Middle Avenue. On the north side between Arbor and El Camino Real, there are apartments, parks, preschool and church, in addition to Safeway Plaza near El Camino Real. As mentioned earlier, the speed along Middle Avenue also varies at this time. Speed limit is 25 miles per hour between University Drive and El Camino Real and 30 miles per hour between Olive and University. Observed speed from 2019 speed survey shows higher speed than speed limit. The city's recently established new 15 miles per hour school zone between Arbor and Kenwood and it is in effect when children are present. The objective for tonight's meeting is to hear what the community prefers and expects for Middle Avenue. We will use the feedbacks that we receive from the meeting to shape the design of the corridor. We have three key discussion topics, and they are bicycle improvements, traffic calming elements, El Camino Real intersection improvements. The materials to help understand these discussions are available in the project website and after this video, a city staff will also bring up these materials to the screen. Please ask questions, provide input to potential options, and feel free to share your ideas. Thank you. Okay, so that was a quick introduction into the, the project. Um, a little background. So at this point, I'm going to bring up some boards that we have to help. Uh, uh, actually, Patrick, if you uh, can bring up the polling questions, I guess that would we can do that first. Um, I think there's. Um, yeah, let me bring up the board first, and then uh, maybe we can bring the polling questions out. Okay. Give me one okay. second. We can we can start with this board um, that's up there right now. If you want? Yeah. Okay. So, so this board is is more of a overview of what Esther just uh, had mentioned. The volumes. These are the number of accidents. Uh, the speed limits, the 50 mile an hour speed limits that just went in through uh, the park. Um, those are only when um, children are present. As you can see up in the right hand corner. Uh, so this is more of a, just an overview of the volumes, <clears throat> excuse me, the speed limits <clears throat> that Esther talked about um, in, the, in the area. 
Okay, Patrick, let's go ahead and uh, shift to the, let's go to the cross section one. Or did uh, you want to go to, like to move to board two or yeah, let's uh, want to go to the, let's go to the polls first and then we'll, uh, we'll look at the poll. Good idea. So there's, so on, on, uh, on your screen, each of the polls, there's a polling area that has these questions in, um, in them. And then we'll go through the poll and then we'll go and go to screens that, that may help, um, help in your, in your decisions. So, um, the turf, first one's pretty straightforward. It's how you use Middle Avenue. Um, so that one's pretty straightforward in the poll. Um, how do you use Middle Avenue today? With the, oh, okay. Well, Okay. All right. Yeah, I think we'll give that maybe one more minute. Uh, it looks like everybody thirty-five out of thirty-five. Oh, I see. Yep, there's forty-nine. Okay. Okay. okay, you want to go to the next poll? Yeah, so I guess we can just go over this this poll first. So it looks like question number one, how do you use Middle Avenue today? Looks like we got a majority for lives nearby, visit park, and for commuting. Uh, how frequently do you travel on Middle Avenue is the second question. And there's a large majority that uses it daily. Uh, and the second highest was a few times per week. And finally, you, how do you, you travel on Middle Avenue? It's, yeah, sorry about that. You should be able to see that now. 92% uh, for that was driving on Middle Avenue. Uh, second was walking at 85% and biking was third. Okay, was that all of them? Uh, for this uh, board, yes, those are the, the polls. So I don't know if, uh, would you like to go to questions if the public has, I see sure. uh, Nikki's answered some in the chat. I don't know if you wanna read through those or not, but looks like we have two attendees with questions. Uh, looks like go ahead. Hirsch, you are the speaker. Okay, can you hear me? Thank you, Patrick, Rich. Yes, no problem, oh, we can hear you. Guys, uh, a whole bunch for doing this. My main question is, are we gonna get the Middle Avenue undercrossing? Is that gonna happen? Yes, um, let me see. Um, we have, Nikki probably could ask this, but to tell you the truth. I, I, <laughs> thank you, Nikki. <laughs> I know we are going to, but in detail. When thank you, Nikki. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Rich, and, and thanks, Bill, for the questions. I'm Nikki Nagai, the public works director for the city. And yeah, we've been working on the Middle Avenue undercrossing for, for quite a while now. There was also a question about it in the chat a, a few minutes ago. Um, so right now it's in design phase, and we're working with uh, Caltrain. Um, this is a, a tunnel proposed under the Caltrain tracks to connect between uh, Burgess Park, Alma Street, and the proposed middle plaza that's under construction right now, right at Middle Avenue. Um, so we're in the design phase. We're working with Caltrain to, to get some agreements in place because they will be a partner since we're building the tunnel kind of across their active railway. So they will likely be leading the construction of the project. Um, 
so that's one major milestone um, that we're we're just passing now is getting all the the agreements coordinated with Caltrain, and then we do still have a, a fairly significant funding shortfall, and so there's about um, eight million dollars set aside for the project right now. Our current estimates are uh, closer to 15 to 20 million to complete the project. We've been working closely with our, our state and federal representatives to look for potentially some federal funding to help close that gap. And uh, Representative Eshu in particular has been very supportive, uh, had proposed uh, to include the project in the, some of the federal infrastructure bills that were pending in Congress over the last year. Uh, but at this point, uh, we still do have that gap uh, while we're waiting for either those bills to move forward or looking for other funding. So that'll be uh, something that we continue to focus on in the coming uh, weeks and months uh, to close that gap. Uh, and once we have that funding in place and approvals from Caltrain and designs ready, then we can get, get into construction. Okay, thank you, Nikki. I guess uh, I would ask you to handicap whether it's actually gonna happen or not, but I won't bother. I'll just say at a very high level, it's be my last comment. This, uh, you know, the undercrossing tied in with a very safe, middle corridor for all users is the one big opportunity we have to reduce the amount of traffic on our roads because most people that go to Burgess Park, all the facilities, they drive there because it is not safe to get there any other way. So if we can do a good job here, I see, I count like 60 collisions, cars and bikes in the last five years, so we have a big problem on this road. If we can actually make it safe, actually reduce accidents, then we can you know, get people to walk or bike to Burgess. We'll take potentially a lot of cars off the road. But what, what I'm disappointed with is the city still uses level of service, which is exactly opposed to a climate action, action plan, Vision Zero and all the rest. So I just asked the city, to let's take this project seriously and make it safe so that we have a chance of delivering a great project to the city. Thank you. Thanks for your feedback. Thank you, Bill. Um, yeah, I see we're getting quite a few questions in the chat doing this. While I'm doing this video, it's kind of hard to answer those, so I'm not sure. Um, We'll do it maybe a little bit later on. Um, any any more questions, uh, Patrick, for this section? Uh, yeah, it looks like we have one question now. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to remind anyone who might have joined us, uh, if you do have a question that you'd like to ask uh, by voice, uh, just enable the raised hand feature and we'll be able to get to you and uh, you can answer or you can ask your question. It's like uh, Mr. Dan Fier, you are now the public speaker. Uh, Dan, if you unmute your microphone, you will be able to post your comments. Good evening, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so I live on middle at Hobart. And my main concern, I, I, I'm all for slowing down traffic because people speed on this street. I'm all for safety, but I, I, I don't see uh, how losing parking, losing parking will affect the residents uh, negatively because, you know, we all we have we have a lot of visitors. We have people who do things for the house, you know, cleaning, whatever. Uh, it, what's the current thinking on parking on the stretch between Olive and uh, the, the first stretch there. So that is one of the the questions in the survey and part of this the uh, development that we're doing is to see you know, to get people's opinions on that on that. Um, it's in one of the other boards as we, as it comes up. So you'll see it as an option. Uh, there's a couple options on on ways of getting um, commute bikers and, and uh, down the roadway. So. Um, it is on the table, removing parking to, to put the bike lanes in, uh, whether it's one side or both sides, uh, you're probably de determined. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for getting so, bike lanes in, but the, yeah. the existing residents need to have some rights too, as far as it goes for parking. 
our driveway is small, so when yeah. we have visitors, there's really very little room for them. And what's going to happen is it'll push people onto the side road. So, for instance, if we have whatever number of people coming and visit us for whatever reason, they'll park in Hobart. So that's going to clog up the side streets. And I think those side streets, uh, you, you'll end up having more uh, safety issues there because they're narrower. Yes, and there will be, um, there's a survey on, it's going to be online later on. So we'll be able to, to uh, fill out that survey to let people know uh, opinions on which ones you'd like to see and, and not see. Um, right now, currently, Patrick, we can go actually, we'll just go to that one too, uh, go to the cross section since he brought this, brought the question up. Oh, Nikki, go ahead. Yeah. No, the, I think if you bring up the cross sections, you, you will, yeah, you recover what I was gonna, gonna say. So go ahead and, okay. and bring those up because that'll help uh, visualize the, the space that's out there. And then we can, can talk through that a little okay. bit more. It's a good question. Yeah, and I think we recognize too um, the the impact that that parking removal can can have um, on on folks that live in in the area. So I think it's it's always a, a balancing act and, and trade offs that that we have to to look at to provide uh, kind of the best use of the space when, when we do have limitations on space for for the majority of of our, our residents. So but we take the the parking removal seriously as well and hear your feedback. One option that uh, some of us uh, in the community uh, looked at, we, we met a couple of years when this first came up, is to prevent parking at certain designated hours when kids are commuting to, to school. Uh, and this way, there's no limitation on parking on weekends. And so, for instance, maybe seven to nine and whatever, two to four. Great. Thanks for that suggestion. So, Rich, do you want to talk about the, the cross section yeah. or do you want me to keep going? I can, <laughs> I can go about the cross section. I, I, um, the, well, actually, Nikki, if you want to keep going about Nilon Park, that's the first slide. I can give the rest of the, the history on the, the rest of the section from university to, to um, I think that's to all of that's where I met Dan, I think, before uh, with that project a few years back. Um, but I can give a little history on that section. Um, if you want to give a little history. Yeah, on the, do, why the, don't, the back um, end. Why don't, Patrick, can you flip to the, the slide for the olive section since that was Sam's question and then we can come back to right. the, other, okay. the other section. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you both. The next slide down. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's on that. It's just scroll down to the next page. So I'll give you a little history. Uh, What's out there right now is an edge line. It's not, it's, it's not a bike lane. A lot of people think it's a bike lane, but we didn't have, there's not enough room to have parking and legal bike lanes out there. So years ago to um, an open school project, they asked us to put those in to, to move vehicles closer to the center line so that uh, kids could, could ride safer. Um, but it is, it's not a legal bike lane at that now. A lot of people you know, think, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but when I did this project, uh, briefly did this project a few years back, um, some of the residents thought that was parking. If, if there's not enough, I mean, a bike lane, but there's there's not enough room. So, uh, uh, Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt. Which board are you looking for? It is the it is the cross section, but the second page. So the first page is Neilon Park. The second page is residential. Give me one second here. It's very slow. Are you able to see that? Is that what you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Perfect. Uh, I would just like to add, we do have three uh, more public ah. comments from, I believe, what was the first uh, slide. So I don't know if you'd like to get those or 
just continue talking about this. Yeah, I think go ahead and get an answer Dan's question and then we can can come back to, to those. Okay, yeah, so if you look Great. at this, there's, we have two different options on the table. One is move parking on both sides and uh, putting bike lanes in and a buffer um, to protect the bicyclists more. And then the other is to not have a buffer. Option two is move parking on one side and to um, and not have the buffer. So these are two options that in the survey you will be able to to choose which ones you'd like. Um, it, it is through what, what from what Esther um, described earlier. It is in our our the city's plans to put bike lanes on here. Do several different uh, plans that the city has that to put bike lanes on here. And so these are kind of our options that we have with what the street is now. As you can see in the first one existing, it shows the city right away is actually 65 feet out there. Um, but right now the street I think is only 42 feet wide or something like that. So, um, so anyways, that's what we're looking at right now for bike lanes at least uh, on the street. Thank you, Rich. And yeah, I think mm -hmm. I just wanted to to also point out. So I think the, the two options that are shown um, do uh, preserve the existing curb line on the street. So um, where you can see like the, the existing um, sidewalk in option one and option two, that, that does stay the same um, compared to, to what's out there today. So we're trying to work within the existing curb to curb line. You can see on that top image as well, um, 60, the city's right of way is, is about 65 feet. So it does extend back uh, behind the, the existing, um, where there are existing sidewalks or, or behind the existing curbs, a, a decent amount of space. So in order to provide parking on both sides and provide bike lanes, we'd really need to look at, at widening out uh, the street and, and moving that curb line uh, back towards uh, the properties. So it's, it's still city right of way. That ends up being a, a more expensive option to, to construct. Um, so it's not without its challenges, but, but that's the, the really only way you could preserve parking on both sides and um, provide space for, for bike lanes um, and, and all the other users on the street. And I'm, I'm sorry if, um, as, as we're going through, I'm, I'm also trying to answer questions in the chat, so you may see me looking off to, to the side. It's because we have a couple monitors running, um, trying to, to do a couple of things at once, but we are listening through, throughout the, the feedback that we're hearing tonight. But with that, um, if you want to flip, flip back to the, the other, other slide and then go through some of the other questions to you, that works. I'll keep Thank going you, through the chat helping. as much as I can. Yeah. Okay. This is my first time doing virtual. So I, I mean, with uh, this many people, I should say. So thank you very much for helping. Patrick, um, the other questions, if we need to go back to the, the other slide. Uh, yes. Give me one second. It looks like the next person is uh, Jessica Gronsky. Uh, you are now the public speaker. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Before I start talking. Um, <laughs> so I had a I had a couple of comments and then also a question. Um, so uh, just to give context, I'm not a resident on Middle Avenue. I'm, I'm somebody who uses Middle Avenue, specifically um, the parks. And um, so uh, on, on my, so uh, one comment is that um, um, my child does go to uh, Encinal uh, Elementary and right in front of Encinal there is um, hourly parking that is restricted during school hours. Um, it, it is routinely ignored and never enforced by the city. Um, and there's always cars parked there where kids are walking um, and uh, kids are riding their bicycle. I don't really think that's a, a great option. So that's, that's one comment. Um, I've seen it work uh, poorly. Um, I strongly suggest you don't do this here. Um, and secondly, my other comment is that um, it's a shame that uh, this plan is considering um, looking solely at Middle Avenue, um, because um, as the earlier commenter 
commenter mentioned, you know, um, what you do on Middle Avenue will affect, you know, the side streets. And I think that um, if you look at the plan holistically, you know, you don't need like, uh, you could you could think about the side streets as like, for example, a great place for people to park and then use like Middle Avenue for through or vice versa, um, maybe having bicycle and pedestrian pathways going through those side side sideways. So just a comment, I know you guys are into this project um, for a while, so not, you guys probably have your reasons for doing it, but I would say like, in some ways the options are limited when you when you focus, focus solely on middle. Um, and then my last question is, um, why are you not considering the curb line? But I think you mentioned it's the cost. Um, and is that is that why you're trying to preserve the, the, the curb line in your current plan? Yeah, that, that's right. The, the options that are, or were shown earlier are, are trying to, to manage the cost, but I think it's also something we wanna to hear tonight um, because that'll help us develop and refine the, the options as we go forward. So I think we're, we're still early in the process. So any feedback is, is welcome. Yeah, what, what is your, uh, what, I mean, I'm curious how much more like, you know, the project ends up costing because I think the amount matters, um, you know, at, at any price, no, but, you know, it, it might be a viable way to, um, you know, have your cake and eat it too, if, if you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't have specific numbers, but I can say for a, the for the length of street that we're talking about on middle, um, we're, we're talking about millions of dollars, not 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 small amounts um, to, to move the curb line for, for that distance. So there's also utilities that have to move. Um, there's poles and, uh, mm -hmm. overhead power lines, and it, it ends up being quite costly when we, we start um, like that kind of cascading effect. But it, again, it's, it's trade-offs and so things that we have to balance and that may be the, the preferred option and it may be something that, that is, um, you know, we hear is important to the community and we can look at phasing the, the project in different ways too, potentially building some shorter term things more quickly, and then looking at longer term options um, that are higher cost and, and can build things over time. So there, there are some options there. And yeah, it's, it's, it will be good for us tonight to, to hear the feedback about where those trade-offs land. Okay. Um, and, and, and I just, uh, one more clarifying question, sorry, since I'm on. Um, when you said there's no bike lane on, is that, do you mean right in front of Neon Park, the, 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 the bike lane there? So, some gentleman earlier mentioned that there was no legal bike lane. Yeah, Which, so the line up there, sorry, the line up there that, that exists out there right now is not, um, at least from University of Olive, I should say, is not um, a bike lane. I don't know if there's any, I can't remember if there's any striping on the other section or not, but I, the, the, the section from University to Olive, uh, it's, it's not far, there's not enough room to put actual bike lane. That's just the edge line, which kind of pushes, is hopefully push people closer to uh, the center line vehicles toward mm -hmm. the center line. So it's not actually a bike lane. It's, it's, it's kind of just the edge line to kind of move people over, but it's not a legal bike lane with two lines, you know, uh, separating it from the cars. Okay. Okay. Thanks. It uh, looks like we might have an additional question from Mr. Kirsch, uh, unless he left his hand up. Yeah, I did that inadvertently, but I just wanted to, since uh, the, <clears throat> the, the lady speaker right before me, I think there's a huge difference in cost and time between keeping the curb to curb because you're just gonna use paint, I believe, just if for whatever you do, would just be using paint. But if you have to expand the curbs, then you, I mean, we're talking 20 years down the road, in my opinion, just see, you know, seeing with all the competing projects, it's not, <clears throat> to me, that's a non-workable option. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that out, thank you. Uh, all right, I believe that was all the public comment for this uh, board, at least. Would you like to move back to the cross-section uh, diagrams? 
sure we can go there and see if there's any questions back on that. Does anybody have any uh, further questions regarding the, um, well, actually, Nikki, can we go through the, the backing in, um, what's happening real quick? Hate to put you on the sure. spot, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yep. Um, yeah, so this is the cross section that's showing um, the area in front of Neilon Park. Um, so just to orient everyone, um, like the, the top uh, part of the image would be um, with Neilon Park on the left, like you're looking towards El Camino Real, and then um, the head-in parking that exists uh, along the, the um, frontage of the park, and then the two uh, travel lanes parking on the other side of the street, uh, the sidewalk, and then uh, the homes on, on the, the south side of Middle Avenue. So um, we have an ongoing construction project uh, that's getting started in the next few weeks. Um, someone in the chat earlier had asked about some potential for lighted crosswalks and, and this work will also construct some flashing beacons at uh, intersections uh, along Middle Avenue at San Mateo Drive and at Blake Street, um, right, at, right at the park entrance. Um, and then it'll re reconstruct the um, pathways leading into the park, uh, move some trash cans around and make the, the access into the park hopefully a little bit more pedestrian friendly and improve the safety of the crossings. So one of the things we're looking at um, as part of that work is also to modify the parking along that frontage. So right now it's, it's head in parking and, and perpendicular um, where you have um, a 90 degree parking all along the frontage. One of the things that we're looking at is um, sw switching that to angled parking where drivers would back in. And so this has been done in, in a couple of uh, other locations uh, nearby uh, in Palo Alto and San Jose, and really has the advantage of allowing um, drivers to maneuver into the parking spaces in a way that they have the best sight lines uh, to people who may be otherwise in the street on a bike, uh, walking. Um, so what you do as a driver uh, is pull kind of up as if you were going to start a parallel parking move, uh, but you only do kind of the first part of that. So you back up into an angled space. And then when you're pulling out, uh, typically where you have to kind of turn around and, and look back over your shoulder, it's hard to see uh, past other parked cars that allows you uh, to have a really clear sight line uh, kind of back over your left shoulder to what may be a bike approaching um, uh, in the, the shoulder space um, back to your left. So that's something that we're, we're thinking about um, putting in place sooner rather than later with this ongoing construction work that we're going to have in the, the area of Milan Park. It'll, it does require uh, some changes along the frontage. Uh, we'll eliminate a few spaces, but we're also looking at changing the parking uh, within the park to then make up any spaces that might be lost as part of uh, this conversion. So that I know it's very busy on the weekends. There's a lot of, of folks, there's a lot of activities uh, in the park. So we wanna try to preserve as much of the parking as possible, but reconfigure it in a way that provides better safety for, for people walking and biking. So that's uh, the, the back in angled option um, that's shown in options one and two um, in these graphics. And then um, the difference in, in these two is, is options for uh, the bike lane that are consistent with what Rich described in some of the other sections earlier, um, either providing a buffer in option one or uh, uh, no buffer in option two, but preserving parking on the, the opposite side of the street. So that's, that's a quick summary of, of what's proposed here. And also happy to answer any questions on this one. Uh, well, it looks like we do have additional public comments. Uh, we have another from Jessica Gronsky. You are now the public speaker. Uh, sorry, uh, Jessica, uh, can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, I really like the angle, angled back end parking option. Um, uh, I think it's really uh, one of my problems with middle is like how unsafe it is for bi bi bicyclists with that parking. It's also really unsafe for uh, cars as they're backing out. Um, for other people who want to see how this works, if you go to the foothills, uh, sorry, sorry, the Stanford Hills parking lot um, on Stanford Ave um, near Junipero um, Expressway, they have an example of this and it works really, really well. Um, and in some ways it does like slow down the traffic, which I think is something the project is also aiming to do because people are waiting for cars to, to back into the, the parking spaces. So just uh, wanted to see something positive. Uh, we have another question from Bill Kirsch. Uh, you're now the public speaker. Thank you again. And, and I appreciate your efforts here to, to get bike lanes. I just want to, <clears throat> my preference would be to remove parking that fronts Neelon Park. It doesn't, in my view, makes it very dangerous no matter what you do with the parking on uh, middle. There's, I believe, plenty of parking in the parking lot uh, <clears throat> that you access off of middle. And the, the one thing I would ask about the angle parking, if you just think about you know, eastbound traffic, I think that would work fine. That's traffic going from El Camino heading towards university. <clears throat> it would seem to be a good option, but I'm worried about cars heading the other way that want to get into that angle parking. They would have to turn and cross the center lane of middle uh, and do a big U-turn right in the middle of that street. And I, I don't think that's uh, akin to what is going on um, near Foothill on Stanford Avenue, because this is a major thoroughfare. So I'm just wondering, as a thought experiment, does that seem to work for you guys? Can you imagine cars going towards El Camino and having to cut across the center line, making a big U-turn to then access this parking when you have bicyclists you know, coming and cars coming at you? Thank you. Yeah, good, good question. Um, so I think there's, I think there's probably two things that happen um, with angled, but with back in angled parking. So one would be drivers coming in that direction are, are more likely to probably just pull in um, uh, because the, the angle makes it more easy for them to, to do so. Um, but I think the other option and, and what we would want to encourage um, drivers to do is to park in, in the park. So you're, you're not having to, to do that maneuver um, in Middle Avenue. So it, it will take some adjustment, I'm sure, um, as any kind of change does. Um, but I think what we would wanna do is encourage drivers who are coming in that direction to park um, either back towards Little House or, or along the, the side within the park as opposed to, to trying to access the angled parking in the front. Uh, next, we have a question from, sorry if I mispronounce this, Ole Agenson. Uh, you are now the public speaker. Very well. Uh, so I'm an experienced cyclist, and I think you said earlier that about 60% of the Middle Avenue users are on a bicycle and 90% are in a car. Um, I felt a little bit later, it, was almost as if we were equating the bicyclists to uh, kids going to school. But I think we should keep in mind that there's a broader population of people who benefit from cycling in many ways, you know, getting around better and fitter and what. Um, I just wanted to offer a perspective when comparing something like option one and option two with where the buffer is. And which is when I'm on a street like middle, on a bicycle, or it could be Santa Cruz or whatever, right? The, the real concern in my mind is to get too close to the parallel parked car and the brake lights come off and two seconds later, the driver's side door opens right in front of me. I'm less worried about getting close to the car moving in the same direction as I am because that car is probably going 25 miles an hour and I may be going 20 miles per hour, 15 miles per hour. 
But in any case, the relative speed between the moving car and the moving cyclist is smaller than the relative speed between the car door and the cyclist hitting it dead on. So I just want to offer that perspective when we think about how to make bicycles and moving and parked cars coexist, that uh, it, it's, um, it's, it's not just getting the buffer between the moving car and the cyclist and pushing the cyclist closer potentially to a parked car. And uh, thanks for, for allowing me to make that comment. Thank you. Uh, we do have one more public comment, but kind of going off that question, I, I think it might be a good idea to bring the poll up uh, for this board, which is uh, about bike lane improvements. So I believe you'll be able to see that on your screen. Uh, the question is, what bike lane option would you recommend the city council? Option one is to remove parking from both sides. Option two, remove parking from one side or an option for other. And as that's going on, uh, we can move to Misha Seelan. Uh, you are now the public speaker. Hi, good evening. Um, I live in the Allied Arts neighborhood, a couple blocks from Middle. And uh, I have a toddler. We walk often to Neyland Park, uh, to the playground there from our house. So regarding the crosswalk there, um, I'm not sure where I saw this, but I believe a stop sign was being considered there. I think that would be very nice. Um, at Blake, right now, trying to cross the street there with a toddler, it feels like, you know, playing chicken with cars, um, very unsafe, especially on weekends. Um, so I would strongly advocate for that. Um, regarding the parking, I know I've seen a good amount of people park on when the uh, parking spots in front of the playground are full, people tend to park on the street. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if people realize just how much parking is in the parking lot, or maybe they just want to park as close as possible, but um, to the, I think um, Ms. Ms. Nagaya's comment earlier about trying to you know direct drivers to behave differently, um, whatever we can do to like put up signs or encourage people to park in the parking lot, I think would be great. Just for, again, safety, because there's no sidewalk on Blake or most of college. So then when we're trying to walk to the playground, um, it can get a little sketchy. A lot of cars driving around that area trying to find parking on the street. Um, and then regarding this specific slide, um, I, I bike a lot and to me, you know, given the behavior that was described to park this way, uh, the angled back end parking, if it's sort of like a parallel parking move, then it sounds like the driver has a really big incentive to go into the bike lane. Um, a lot of people that are parking there are going to the playground, so they probably have kids in the car, they're, you know, not paying attention necessarily to what's going on. So I would just be really worried about people um, going right in front of a bike or whatever so they can do that back end move um so my only thought is is there an option to potentially put the bike lane on the other side of the parking where it kind of um goes closer to the park for that portion sort of like the sidewalk does um i think that would be a lot safer for the cyclists and just cause a lot less uh potential for, you know, dangerous collisions, I think. So yeah, those are my comments. And then, yeah, my question is, is, there, is it possible to put the bike lane on the other side of the back in parking? And maybe you could comment on the stop sign question as well for that crosswalk. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you for your questions and comments. Um, yeah, so we'll start with the, the Blake Street one. Um, because that's probably the most straightforward. Um, so what's proposed as part of the, the upcoming construction is a, um, it's called a rapid flashing beacon uh, that would be added uh, to the intersection um, 
with a crosswalk. So uh, as you approach as a pedestrian, you can hit the button and it activates um, flashing beacons. We have them elsewhere in the city at Ravenswood and Alma, uh, right by the uh, Menlo Park Library and the Caltrain uh, station. Also uh, one that's under construction on, on Oak Grove, um, right at the Caltrain tracks. And then another one that was recently put in uh, the, the former Roger Reynolds nursery site, the, the new um, residential development that, that opened a couple years ago, um, a crossing at Ensignal, um, right at the, the Caltrain tracks as well. Um, so those have been shown to be really effective in getting drivers' attention because the, the beacons flash quite quickly um, in a, a pretty fast pattern and they're, they're bright. So um, usually can catch the, the driver's attention. We have a pedestrian in the crosswalk. So a stop sign is not proposed at Blake uh, as part of this upcoming construction. It's something that we can definitely look at um, as part of the Complete Streets project to see if, if additional um, measures should be taken to, to improve safety, particularly as, as, as it's safer and more people start to cross, um, then, then we can evaluate a stop sign and, and see if that, that would be um, warranted and desired in, in that location. Um, and then in terms of the, the back end angled parking and the, the bike lane switching locations, um, it's something that, that we can take, take back to the team and, and look at a little bit more closely. Um, I know um, some of the folks who've been working on, on this project did look at it as part of um, their due diligence before we um, uh, brought forward this construction project right now. And I know there are some constraints, but I, I don't know all the details off, off the top of my head, but we can definitely take that back and see if it's something that we can look at as part of the Complete Streets project in more detail and, and follow up um, with more information as we, we move forward but appreciate the, the thoughts about the, um, the, the challenges that, that exist with, with parking and bike lanes and, and the interaction be, between the user. It's a great point. Uh, it looks like we have a few follow-up questions. Uh, just really quickly first, I'd like to share the result for the poll. Uh, it seems like option two for removing parking from one side of the street. It's about 61%. So that was the majority for that. Uh, going back to Mr. Kirsch, uh, you're another public speaker. Thank you again. Uh, just a couple of comments. <clears throat> uh, Nikki, back to the directing people into the parking lot that are going westbound. Since the city want, is considering doing that, why not get all people to park back there? Why do we want the westbound to park in the parking lot, but but just remove all the the frontage parking on middle and get everybody to use that that back lot. I believe there's plenty of room and it's not very far from the park. So that's one comment. Number two on the <clears throat> on the crosswalk, uh, cars speed on middle. And so if you have flashing lights, and I think Misha can appreciate this, the speaker before you have a child, You've got to stand there, wait for the cars that are moving fast to slow down, um, and it's it's scary. And so, why not put a raised crosswalk in, like we have with Sh on Sharon, uh, that has cutouts for emergency vehicles? I know they have problems with, uh, you know, with uh, raised crosswalks, but if there's cutouts, that would accommodate them. So, to me, that would really slow down traffic if you know you have a raised crosswalk coming up. You'll just slow down. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have another comment. Misha Sulin, you are now the public speaker. Hi, yeah, I just wanted to respond to um, Ms. Nagaya's response. So, Regarding the stop sign, so yeah, I mean, I I use the fl uh, flashing light crosswalk at um, Ravenswood, and I would say it's still pretty intimidating, um, especially because that's a big street that takes people to the freeway. But you know, you push those lights, and some people stop, some people don't. So you're kind of, you know, you probably heard the term like the beg button. You feel like you're just kind of hoping someone stops at the flashing lights. I think on middle, that'd be less of a problem, but still a lot of people are using that street just to get to El Camino. And so when they hit that stop sign at university, they're kind of just gunning 
to get to El Camino and they're not necessarily focused on any sort of you know crosswalks so that's been my experience I'm not you know I think at this point it probably makes sense to study what happens after you put in the lights but um I would really yeah like Bill said recommend maybe looking at other options and then um regarding the bike option the bike lane rather um yeah I mean just kind of looking at the picture there option one or two and I think there's a previous commenter that mentioned this as well like as a cyclist um it's always scary to be going between two cars one on the right one on one on each side uh whether they're backed in or parallel parked or whatever because you just never know what's going to happen you have to be very observant and careful and so um it's just going to limit the type of cyclists that are going to go down that bike lane like i would not let my kid go down a, a bike lane like that i would just probably just go on the sidewalk to be honest because um especially at that park a lot of people come in their cars from other areas which is great i'm not complaining about that but i'm just saying that they're not necessarily focused on like paying a lot of attention when they're getting in and out of those spots so i really would strongly recommend looking for other options for that bike lane on, on the left side of the street um, in these pictures to be somehow more safe so that you know parents can feel comfortable having kids bike down that and that's keeping in mind that this is going to be a street to um, you know a route to Menlo Atherton once that undercrossing is built so I think it would be definitely something to consider um, thank you Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. And um, yeah, you can call me Nikki <laughs> to call me Miss, Miss Nagaya, but um, definitely appreciate the, um, the the feedback about the options. And yeah, I think our, our overall objective is to to make the, the streets as, as usable for, for folks of all ages and abilities. I'm sure many of you have heard the, the 8 to 80 term, um, where we're really trying to encourage Know, kids as young as eight and, and folks as old as 80 and, and even beyond that but um, trying to make it safe for all users so understand um yeah there there are then trade-offs that that we have to look at um in order to to meet those objectives and and um yeah that's why we're we're here for for this project to to hear hear what you would like to see so thank you It looks like we have two more or three more comments for this board. Uh, so next up, Mashid Sadat, uh, you are now the public speaker. Good evening. Um, I don't live on middle, but I um, al almost always drive through middle to get anywhere. And uh, one problem we have is aggressive drivers. They don't observe speed limit so no matter what speed limit you put there has to be some kind of enforcement measures like maybe better police presence um, i always drive at speed limit or lower and people uh, tailgate me or hunk in the back because they are in a rush uh, also <clears throat> pedestrians also jump in this into the street they think a car driving at 30 miles an hour can uh, instantaneously stop. That's not possible. So we have a lot of people who are not familiar with like the physics of moving. Uh, I also do not uh, agree with angle back in parking. Similar uh, situation exists near DISH in Palo Alto. Um, people have a hard time to back in at an angle and it requires couple back and forth movement. So it would actually <clears throat> complicate the situation more than it helps. Why not just use a head in parking and in backing out, people uh, usually do better when they back out into the street, even though they have to cross the bike lane. Uh, uh, what I suggest is at least have one side a head in parking, even if you have to eliminate the parking on the other side. For um, uh, pedestrian crossings, I suggest a kind of flashing uh, light so that pedestrians can wait and 
uh, wait for their turn rather than just jump into the street. Um, I'm a very careful driver, but a lot of times I had to slam on the brake because someone jumped on the street without even looking. Uh, I can't read their mind, whether they're just walking or they just want to cross the street. So if we act smart and add these measures uh, in a way that would help everyone to know uh, their limits, their rights, probably would be a better result with lower cost. That's all I have to say. Uh, thank you very much for your comment. I don't, Nikki, yeah. if you want to go ahead. Sorry, Patrick. Yeah, thank you. I, I just wanted to to mention one thing. I definitely appreciate the the feedback and and yeah, the the back and angled parking can can take some getting used to for for sure. Um, but just in terms of of um, pedestrians jumping out, we, we definitely want to encourage people to to, to look uh, both ways before they cross. But it, but it is the driver's responsibility to make sure that you're able to stop um, and and navigate um, safely as you're, you're driving a vehicle. So understand there there are definitely unexpected things that that pop out when you're when you're driving. Um, but pedestrians do have the the right of way when they're they're crossing, and I think there's there's often a lot of confusion about where are legal crossings, and and those exist that at every intersection, uh, regardless of whether there's a marked crosswalk or not. Um, a, a marked crosswalk does give more visibility to pedestrians that may be crossing in that location. But even if you're at a, an intersection with no crossing marked um, and a pedestrian's attempting to cross the street, um, you're, as a driver, you're supposed to yield the, the right of way to, to them. So um, while I, I have 30 people listening, you're <laughs> listening to me, I just wanted to make, make that point tonight because it is a, an often uh, overlooked area in the, the vehicle code um, for sure. But back to you, Patrick. Thank you. Uh, it looks like we have two more comments for this board. Uh, Jessica Gronsky, you are now the public speaker. Um, hi, I, I have a, actually a question about the process here. Um, I, I heard the speaker, um, I, I believe Nikki, hi. hi. Um, I think you said something like, oh, um, you know, maybe the Complete Streets Commission can look at this, but uh, for one of the options that one of the speakers gave, which, you know, um, and so my question is, will we, we are proposing a bunch of options. Some of them seem plausible to me, like um, as that are not on the board here. Um, will you guys be coming back to, to us, the public, with having investigated these options um, and and presenting new options based on our feedback, what 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 should we expect? And also, um, and my understanding, but I could be incorrect, is that the Complete Streets Commission um, essentially um, speaks during the construction to give feedback to the people constructing. So so they would in some sense should all already be um, incorporated into this process. Um, but, you know, I would just love a little bit more clarity about like, when are we gonna see, if if we are gonna see options uh, that we have proposed, when, um, and, you know, uh, how, how does this process work? Thank you, Jessica, nice to meet you. Um, hopefully someday we'll be able to, to meet in person again, <laughs> but um, I think, Overall, your, your first question about complete streets. I'm sorry, um, I, I probably wasn't clear earlier when I when I made the mention to complete streets. It was um, just as part of the Middle Avenue complete streets study that we would want to look at um, the the options that that we were hearing about tonight. Um, this this project um, will eventually go to the Complete Streets Commission for a selection of an alternative, and then forward to the City Council for for approval. Um, but but I wasn't trying to refer the specific suggestions and feedback we were hearing tonight to the commission. We we will be evaluating those as part of our work on this complete streets project, and then bringing forward recommendations, incorporating that feedback to um, the the commission and then the council. And then um, uh, Richard Patrick, if you know the specific next steps in terms of other community meetings, otherwise I can get the answer to that question and and come back to you momentarily. 
Yeah, there was a schedule um, that Esther shared with us, but it didn't have exact dates or anything. This is what the schedule is on going to the complete streets next and then going to, after reviewing all the options and opinions from everybody, then going to complete streets and then uh, the council. So there wasn't a, any schedules of when it will happen. It's fine if you don't know exactly when it will happen, but will you guys be seriously considering the proposals mentioned here? You know, eliminating the parking um, in front of Neilan Park or moving the bicycle lane. Um, both, I don't know <laughs> if it makes sense or not, but I, I would love to see a serious evaluation of, of, of these proposals if, if we haven't done it already. Yeah, th thank you, Jessica. And yeah, we, we will we will be taking all the, the feedback we get and looking at and evaluating all of it. Uh, we have we have about 35 or 40 people uh, who are participating, I think 48 right now um, on this Zoom. And then there's there's a good contingent in the, the park tonight. So we're going to have to compile all the feedback and then um, look forward to evaluating the options and suggestions that we hear and, and we will give give all of them a fair shake as we, we go forward um, and making sure that that we bring something back that that's responsive to to what we hear tonight. Uh, looks like we have one more uh, question for this slide. So Erica Caruso, you're now the public speaker. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tom. I'm Erica's husband. Um, we live, um, like I'm sure some of the other people on tonight, we live right next to Neilan Park on Middle Ave. And so we live this um, constantly. And just for what it's worth, I don't see any way, whether it's angled back in parking, angled front end parking, that that parking stays in front of Neilan Park with bicyclists and pedestrians crossing at Blake plus the, the traffic increase that's gonna happen after the whole project opens up on El Camino. I just don't see how that parking lives there without it um, still being very unsafe for pedestrian, bicyclists, and motorists trying to get in and out. And given the fact that there's a enormous parking lot that's underutilized right behind Neilan Park, it seems like there is a solution set here that's very obvious that's not being represented as one of the potential options that would have very minimal. Um, uh, I mean, it just wouldn't hurt people that much to walk a little bit further um, for the safety of the community to not have to try to figure out some way to have an extra so many cars parked in front of Nila. But um, well, that's all I have to say about that. Thanks, guys. Thank you for your feedback. Oh, looks like we have one more public comment. Uh, Francesca Martin Kelly, you're now the public speaker. Yeah, hi. I had just a quick question um, regarding protected bikeways. Has that been considered? Yeah, thank you for, for the question. Um, so these options don't include uh, protected bike lanes, as you can see, but um, the was one of the challenges that we have with, with protected bike lanes on a street where you have um, a lot of driveways. And so particularly as you get past Neilan Park and into the area where there's more residential uses fronting the street, you have a, a pretty um, uh, frequent uh, driveway access that we need to maintain. And so if you build a protected facility, traditionally that has some sort of uh, curb or vertical separation between the travel lane and the bike lane. And so in order to build something that's protected uh, and accommodate access to those driveways, you're really seeing uh, the protection broken uh, fairly regularly throughout. And so it, it ends up looking something that's more like a buffered bike lane at the end of the day as well. Um, there are some cities um, who have in the South Bay particularly who have been experimenting with some other options for protected bike lanes on residential streets. So that's something that we can continue to look at and see if there are emerging uh, strategies to, to provide more protection while also accommodating access to driveways. But that's one of the constraints we have on the, 
this corridor. Okay, thank you. That makes sense. And I just had one other um, one other concern that I've already voiced um, in the comments, but um, the crosswalk at Arbor, um, and it sounds like I'm not alone on, on this, um, Arbor at Jack Lyle, um, Middle and Jack Lyle, that, that crosswalk is very dangerous. And there have been many times where you know, I see families standing right there in plain view and people just, just multiple cars just fly right by. And um, it's, it's a big concern. So um, whether it be a stop sign or um, a lit, um, lighted side, you know, uh, um, light there, I, yeah, something needs to be done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, if we, I think if we hear any consensus tonight, it's definitely that something needs to be done at Arbor. So I think, I think we got that one from the feedback in the chat. Thanks for your feedback. Uh, looks like we have one more public comment. How about at the, should we move on to the next board at the same time or well, what would you prefer? Let's go ahead and remove the, the Oh, the survey I did. So let's go ahead and move to the next board. Do they both have to do with, with this? Or we kind of moving into traffic? Why don't we go to traffic calming maybe? And it sounds we're kind of our, 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 um, complete streets. Yeah, we're kind of here we anyway. Have, so. Yeah, we have, uh, I guess, continued slides for board two. I guess this says more information on the back end angle parking um, as well. Has more examples down below. Okay. Uh, we have a public comment from RM. Uh, you are now the public speaker. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, thanks for, for this meeting and for all you're doing to improve our community. I'm Rebecca, we live at University in Middle and I would be remiss not to comment about our very dangerous yet residential intersection. I've seen people in wheelchairs, on walkers, dogs, puppies, babies, children, nannies, all almost run over at our intersection. There was a car accident into our yard. Some of you neighbors are aware of where my children would have been killed because someone drove up through our fence onto our yard by because of running the stop sign at university in middle. So I think that alone is definitely a dangerous intersection that's not really properly um, safe. We, you know, I'd love a light there. I'd love some sort of additional way to make that a safer intersection. But I think that just speaks to the broader issue that so many of the wonderful neighbors have spoken about, which is we really need better speed control and other ways in general to support Middle Ave being a residential street and not a drive-through street for people who wanna use Menlo Park as a way to get you know, to a, to a bigger commute. Um, so many people speeding, so many people driving recklessly if they're speeding into our park for one whatever reason and back out and almost hit a cyclist. I've seen it many times or a nanny in a, on a, with a stroller trying to go around a parking spot. And so I really think um, we just need more voices speaking up about that. Um, I don't think adding or keeping um, you know street parking outside Neyland is safe in any way and can be safe because I agree with your thought about a protected bike lane not being really feasible. And um, just a shout out to the dangerousness of the street in general without speed control um, and especially in our worldview at University of Middle. Thanks. Uh, thank you for your comment. And I think with that, we can move on to the third board. Rich. Uh... Sure, we'll go to. Uh, this is the intersection question mark. so i just really want to also let you guys let everybody know that uh, on our web page all these boards that we're showing you quickly through here are on our web page as well so feel free to take a look at them after um and, and make comments on the project even after this uh, meeting do we have the the poll for this these questions uh, yes, I can. Let me run that now. 
Yeah, and I think we've been hearing some questions in the chat as well. So yeah, these are all options for what could be um, incorporated in the improvements for the Middle Avenue El Camino Real intersection. Um, so everything from some uh, what are called like blank out signs um, that come on when there are pedestrians in the crosswalks. Uh, that's the, the middle top photo. Um, uh, signal timing things like a leading pedestrian interval that's the bottom left where somebody crossing the street gets some advanced um, time before the, the vehicles get the green light to, to go. And that helps eliminate particularly turn conflicts with, with pedestrians crossing because you're already a, a little bit into the crosswalk before the, the cars can start moving. Um, other things like paint, uh, different crossing marking styles, a, a bike signal, um, and then protected intersection concept. And, and that provides kind of waiting space um, on each corner for uh, bicyclists uh, to be able to navigate the intersection without having to kind of merge into turning traffic as, as much. Um, so those are a couple options that are um, on the screen and then in the poll. And, and we're happy to, to talk through any questions on these two. It looks like we might have a, another public comment from Francesca Martin Kelly. Uh, you are now the public speaker. Uh, your microphone is still muted if that was a, an intentional hand. All right, it looks like we might have to come back to that then. All right, well, it looks like we have about 70% uh, for the poll, so you can kind of see some results on that. Uh, for Complete streets features, the speed of vehicle traffic. Residents were very concerned, uh, about 70%. Visibility and safety of pedestrian crossing, very concerned as well, it's a 77%. And the availability of sidewalks, uh, slightly less, it was a 58% for very concerned. So we can share those and you should be able to see that on your screen. I believe we have a, another public comment from Misha Seelan. You are now the public speaker. Yeah, um, regarding these options, I mean, they all sound great. Again, I just trying to keep in mind that in the future, there would be that undercrossing under Caltrain. And um, I see a lot of cyclists going to Menlo Atherton from you know our side of the city. And right now I think they, uh, and I found this out because I was driving my toddler to uh, Menlo Children's Center by Burgess from Allied Arts. And I found that what high school kids were doing was crossing at Roble. And then they kind of go through the back of the parking lot behind like Bavmo and then take Ravenswood. But if this undercrossing exists, I imagine a lot of high school kids would want to cross at middle on their bikes. And so I think the protected intersection picture looks great. I've seen a couple of examples out in San Francisco, which are really nice because you just, anytime as a cyclist, you feel like you're protected from a car by like a physical object. <laughs> it definitely gives you a much higher sense of security and confidence. And um, I think for high school kids biking to school, that would be very nice to have. Um, and same thing with like the, the sign that restricts um, a right turn, especially people turning right from El Camino onto middle uh, maybe that's now just because there's the construction going on there, but I see a lot of people just kind of doing that without looking to see if there's, um, anybody else there. So yeah, those are my comments. I think just making it as safe as possible for cyclists heading to the undercrossing and pedestrians as well, of course. Thank you. Great. Thanks for your feedback. And I think um, 
we'll take this moment because we I know there's a good number of questions still in the chat that we're working through. Um, so we'll introduce also our assistant public works director for transportation, Hugh Louch, who um, was out in the field at the community meeting at the park, um, but is joining us for reinforcements. So he is also on with us now and we'll keep working our way through the, the chat and, and questions as we go through. Thanks for your feedback so far. Uh, Nikki, would you like me to read some of those out just for transparency? Sure, yeah, we can do that. Great. Thanks, Patrick. No problem. Uh, I guess we can go back to the first question that I see. What can be done to lessen the amount of car collisions and traffic near the entrance to the parking lot of Little House? Uh, right now, cars are trying to bypass the cars, trying to turn left into the parking lot, creating danger for bicycles. Yeah, that's a good question. So I think um, in that case, the the access point to the, the parking lot, um, kind of getting into to Milan, um, we would want to take a, a closer look at um, both the, the frequency of turn movements and then also um, if there are other kind of traffic calming techniques and, and things that we can do to improve um, visibility and, and reduce the speed so that the, that can be kind of two of the primary factors to help mitigate collisions um, if they're occurring frequently in, in that location. I think um, the, the collision diagrams on, on some of the previous boards too. So tends to be a, a hot spot. So we can look at some of those strategies as we go forward into the design process as well. Thank you. It looks like the next question is from Catherine McMillan. Uh, how will the beacons be activated? Will the presence of a bicycle activate the light or can it only be activated by hand? Uh, I don't anticipate the cyclists are going to dismount to get to the signal. Yeah, no, that's a, a good question as well. And um, yeah, in this case, the, the two beacons that are proposed are um, uh, activated with, with a push button. So you do have to uh, walk up and, and hit the button in order to, to get the beacons to flash. Uh, but their primary purpose is also um, for pedestrians crossing the street. So we, we tend to place the push buttons in a location where um, they're they're most easily accessed for, for somebody crossing, particularly um, accessible for somebody who may be in a, a wheelchair or other, has other mobility impairments. Um, so from a bicyclist perspective, um, to use the, the beacon, you would typically have to, to dismount and, and get over to the button to push it to cross. So definitely not a, a fail safe mechanism, but um, is a, um, an option if, if there's there's heavy traffic and you want to use the crosswalk to get across. Good question. The next question comes from Erica Caruso. If you did the back end angled parking at Nilon, Moray, and Kenwood Drive, uh, we'll get a huge influx in traffic making U-turns at peak times. Uh, the parking lot behind Nilon is underutilized. Is there any way to direct more traffic there? Yeah, yeah, and I think um, that's part of um, what we're, we're hoping to, to see as part of the, the back end angled parking conversion would be um, uh, directing more, more folks back there. So I think we can look at some, some signs um, to, to make sure that folks know that the parking is available. I think a lot of our, our frequent flyers at Nilon Park are, are pretty familiar with the, the parking that's available. It's just more that the parking along the frontage is probably more convenient to where they want to go within the park. Um, but, but it's also um, a fairly short walk to, to get across the, the park area. So yeah, I think we'd want to be encouraging folks to use the, the existing parking space in other locations. Thank you. The next question comes from Mr. Cook. Uh, would you please clarify the speed limit change mentioned in the slide? It said 15 miles per hour during school hours. Is that to be implemented on all middle Ave? And I can move the slide back. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. And I think that was in reference to the school zones. I'll wait till you get there, but I 
Yeah, yeah, thank you. So yeah, that that is a, a photo of the new um, 15 mile an hour school zones that that um, this is saying coming coming soon. So there are two preschools along the corridor where um, we're adding uh, the school zone signs for 15 mile an hour 15 mile an hour speed limits when children are present. Um, so that's not the entirety of Middle Avenue, but the the areas around those those preschools. Let's see, uh, I'm looking at some comments here. It seems the next question is, how does the city's need to increase housing density overlay and impact parking adjustments on middle and side streets? Yeah, yeah, so the city right now is going through an ongoing effort. Um, it's called the housing element. So every seven years, um, it's required by the state, we need to, take a look at our housing policies and, and areas in the city that are zoned for, for housing production. Um, so that work is going on right now. Um, I would say um, in terms of specific sites, um, we can definitely follow up and, and provide some additional information in, um, I think we can enter information into the Q&A too, so we can provide a, a link to the, the documents of, of where housing sites are proposed in the city um, in terms of like specific things in this area. I, I don't believe there are specific sites along um, Middle Avenue that would add, add much housing, um, but one of the strategies that, that Menlo Park and, and a lot of cities, um, particularly suburban cities have been using to um, help satisfy the housing production requirements is encouraging uh, secondary dwelling units, so um, small kind of granny units in, in the back of, of single family lots. Um, so that could add uh, some density to, to this corridor as well. Um, but I think a lot of the, the housing production sites that are, are being evaluated as part of the housing element are, are closer into downtown. Uh, there's some um, sites in Sharon Heights, particularly the, the Sharon Heights Shopping Center, the, the Safeway Shopping Center. Um, as well as uh, sites at the, the VA uh, near Flood Park and um, also uh, the, the um, SRI campus. So there, there are several spread around the city, but uh, none that, that come to mind on, on Middle Avenue. Uh, the next question comes from Francesca Martin Kelly. I'm not sure if this was answered already, but have protected bikeways been considered? Yeah, thank you. I think we did cover that one earlier, um, but it, just to, to reiterate, uh, we, we can look at protected bikeways, that, but the, the challenge here with the residential corridor is, is providing access to driveways as well as, as providing the protection. You end up with a lot of breaks in the protected barrier. Uh, we have a question from Steve Bittler. Will the sidewalks be completed and extended from Olive to El Camino? Yeah, that, that one had come up a couple of times in the chat. So I think we're, we're not necessarily prescribing uh, that sidewalks need to be installed, completed on both sides of the street as part of this project. I think that's one thing that, that we would like to hear some feedback about tonight. Um, so if you have feelings one way or another, would, would love to hear them. I think there's been some discussion of this in the Q&A, um, uh, in the written Q&A so far. But um, I think if, if there is desire for sidewalks, I think what we would likely want to do is prioritize um, one side of the street over the other and look to provide a continuous walking facility, at least on one side, uh, because sidewalk construction can be quite expensive. Um, and so we'd want to try to, to make sure there's a complete facility on at least one side of the street to start and then um, look for, for future opportunities to, to potentially phase that work over time as well. Um, next question is, most of the accidents seem to happen near El Camino. What design elements can be used to make it safer? Yeah, I'm not sure what time that question came in, but I, I think the last board that we had shown um, 
did highlight a number of the potential treatments that we could use at El Camino Real. Um, so happy to, to continue to answer questions uh, if there's anything on those specific treatments, but that, that did cover um, some of the options that, that we're considering. Uh, this is a second question from Steve Bittler. Have you considered moving bikes off middle onto side streets where side streets could have bike lanes? Uh, I'm an avid cyclist and do not use middle preferring side streets. Yeah, no, that's a good question. I think overall the, the city's transportation master plan did lay out the proposed kind of overall bikeway network. Um, and, and middle was was included in that because it does provide a, a pretty critical connection between um, the proposed middle undercrossing uh, that's shown shown on the slide here um, and, and a lot of key destinations, parks and, and other things uh, along the middle corridor and then beyond, um, as well as connections to schools, both Hillview and, and Oak Knoll and, and a number of, of um, uh, kind of other other school traffic that passes through the, the middle corridor. Um, so I think even if there may be ways to, to get to your destination without using middle, it does tend to be a pretty convenient um, cross town route, um, particularly with the, the proposed undercrossing uh, for, for biking and walking. So that's why it's, it's proposed as part of the, the network. And I am sorry, I can't remember which slide it's on, but there, there are some images of um, the, the overall bikeway network that's proposed, um, what's existing and proposed as part of the, the presentation materials tonight. So if there's a particular route that you're interested in, um, we, we can definitely take feedback as well, um, just generally tonight about, about where those connections are and, and where you're, you're hoping to travel to. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. It's, it's the top left part of the screen here. It shows the existing facilities. Yes, I'll, I'll just move to the, the fourth board while we're, we're going through the rest of these uh, questions. Yeah. And there's one more poll with, with that board, right? Yes, and I can do that right yeah. now. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. And, and Rich, do you wanna walk through this board? And then we'll go back to Q&A. Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, see. So this is complete streets. These are options, actually the, this current slide shows the speed limit. It also shows um, speed limit at mid, middle at El Camino, the speed limit at middle at Arbor, excuse me, and then speed limit at, at middle at Cotton. If you look at the, these is what, speed limits are derived by 85th percentile and that's where these numbers are coming from. Uh, percentage of vehicles um, through a survey. Um, then there's a thing on the left side shows the safety when vehicles are going different speeds. The slide down below shows where there's existing sidewalks in the blue and where we're missing sidewalks throughout the, throughout the corridor. Um, so it shows the gaps in the sidewalk. So with the complete street study, what we're looking for is, is ways of possibly slowing down, calming down traffic. And so, Patrick, we go to the next slide. It shows options of that we have tools in our our, our toolbox to to uh, traffic calming, which you've seen in several places throughout the city. We have some of these uh, different options. Uh, there's a flashing beacon, which Nikki was talking about earlier, that are that are going in at, at Blake and then at uh, San Mateo. They should be coming in soon. Um, there's bull belts. Uh, we do have Few of those throughout the city. Um, wayfinding signs to help guide uh, bicyclists and pedestrians uh, where to go. We do have raised crosswalks, as, as uh, I think Bill mentioned earlier, on a few streets, Laurel, uh, uh, Willow Road, uh, in different sections. Um, and then there's speed bumps. And then and then also new sidewalks, uh, as mentioned before, we, we talked about that as well. So these are all tools that we can to, to try to, to control speeds on, on streets to, to 
process and making it safer for for uh, for pedestrians and bicyclists. So with that, we'll get the there's a oh you guys you did the pull down the poll. See what the poll says. Yeah, so it looks like we have about half uh, participants in the chat. So if you'd like to vote on that, please vote now. And I'll give it a couple seconds. All right, it looks like for this poll, reducing conflicts between right turns and bicyclists and pedestrian crossings is majority of overwhelming majority is very important. Uh, providing <clears throat> separate paths for pedestrians, bicyclists, and vehicles is also very important. And providing wayfinding for pedestrians and bicyclists, somewhat important is the majority. And minimizing the delay to vehicle travel is a not important as the majority. Thank you. And we we did have one question in the chat earlier um, that I, I acknowledged and I, I promised I would come back to um, uh, somebody that asked to explain the difference between a, a standard bike lane and a buffered bike lane. Uh, so one of the photos on this screen will, will help us illustrate that a little bit. Uh, so the bottom left photo that has the picture of the raised crosswalk. Um, shows kind of a standard bike lane configuration. Uh, you can see the bike symbol, the arrow, and then the, the shoulder stripe uh, separating the bike lane and the travel lane. Um, so that's kind of the, the standard, what's called a class two bicycle lane. Um, and then the options that we were presenting earlier tonight included um, what's called a buffered area. So that would uh, kind of add an additional stripe and uh, space between uh, the bike lane and the travel lane. So provide some additional horizontal separation between uh, a moving car and, and a bicyclist uh, traveling on the street. So hopefully that helps illustrate a little bit different, um, uh, the, a little bit of the difference between what a buffered bike lane is and a standard bike lane. Yeah, we put uh, several on uh, Santa Cruz. Those are buffered bike lanes on Santa Cruz. So. Thank you, Rich. And did we get through all the boards? Was yes, this the is set? the yes, this is the last one. Okay. Uh, it does look like we have two uh, people with public comments that uh, we could go to, I guess, before getting back to the text comments. Uh, Jessica Gronsky, you are now the public speaker. Um, hello. Uh, sorry. I just wanted to say this because I was the person who uh, earlier commented that I, I liked the uh, angled back parking. Um, after listening to everybody talk, I, I am actually one of the people who had no idea that there was parking available in the back of Neyland Park. Um, we should absolutely, if we can, get rid of those parking spots and just direct people to the to the back parking lot. And I wanted to say it since I was the person advocating for angled back parking in the in the past. The other thing is um, a number of people on this call have like uh, specifically objected to the angled back parking. I, I And generally the response has been like, oh, we'll look into it. I would, I really think it's important for um, your working group to consider um, these other options because it sounds to me like most people on this call Maybe there's other people who are commenting who I'm not reading, but um, you know, strongly di dislike the angled back parking, and um, uh, I, I, I'm afraid that it will go forward without like uh, you know considering the other options. If I could go back and revote, I would change my vote to option three, like none of the above. Um, so I just wanted to to comment that um, yes, please consider something else. Thank you for your feedback. And yeah, now um, I will take this opportunity to, to introduce again, Hugh Louch is our Assistant Public Works Director for Transportation. Um, so yeah, we are all hearing your feedback and we will um, consolidate with what we heard from the, the in-person meeting and then 
figure out the, the path forward, but thank you. Thanks for that. And, and maybe just say quick thanks as I, we did have an in-person meeting uh, with about this many people again, um, as I appear to be on the, uh, on the Zoom meeting here. So I uh, really appreciate everybody attending uh, today here and in, and in person. And uh, obviously great to get all the feedback to help inform what we do uh, moving forward here. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, I believe we have one more caller for public comment. Uh, Mark, you are the public speaker. Okay, uh, you can hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, um, just got various comments on everything. Um, one on the Neon Park um, parking. Uh, I think it's also a great idea to remove the parking, let people park in back, or maybe one other idea is to have them be like parallel parking spots that are easy to drive in and out of. Um, and that may solve some of the problem too. Um, at the El Camino middle intersection, a lot of the traffic turning left onto middle um, seems to always go be going into the Safeway parking lot. Um, and I think a lot of people don't know that if they drive past middle, they can get in a left turn lane and El Camino and go straight into Safeway. If there was a way to put a sign on El Camino saying like use second left for Safeway, you might be able to get rid of a lot of traffic at that intersection. Um, <clears throat> And then um, on uh, the, the section in the middle from University to El Camino, um, I hope you don't do anything that really starts stopping or slowing the traffic down anymore, <clears throat> like stop signs or bumps, because I think people will start using side streets if you do that. And with the construction on El Camino that's been going on, I've already started using like Cambridge and Partridge to avoid that mess. And I think if you if you make Middle Ave worse, you're going to get more people using those side streets. Um, <clears throat> and then the last comment is uh, on the section from University to Olive. Um, I'm all for maybe bike lanes and improve pedestrian crossings, but I really don't think the speed limit should be lowered below 30. Um, and and I don't see how your latest traffic survey would even allow that. Um, and on Santa Cruz Ave, you lowered the speed limit to 25 like a year ago. And it's, it's as far as I can tell, been a total failure. Everybody on Santa Cruz is still driving at 30. Um, and I think you would find the same thing is gonna happen if you try to do that to middle. So um, those are all my comments. Thanks. Great, thanks for those comments. Uh, we have one more, we have another public comment. Uh, Misha Seelan, you are now the public speaker. Hi, uh, yeah, so um, in terms of this particular board, uh, one, one comment I want to make is regarding bulb outs. So I used to live um, near San Carlos and they put in some bulb outs. And one of the issues is that for cyclists, like you can see in that picture, if there was a bike lane there, you're essentially force, forcing cyclists to go into the main car traffic lanes to go around the bulb out. So if you do consider doing bulb outs, I would just wanna make sure that um, you leave like a, a cut through for the bike lane, um, sort of like the previous slide where you showed the El Camino options. Um, <clears throat> that would be very, very great. And then, in terms of uh, you know traffic calming on the street, I mean, we already talked about the crossing at Blake for Neelon Park and going between University and Olive, there's no uh, traffic calming there at all right now, right? So a lot of cars, that's basically like a straightaway for those cars. And so we just need things in my opinion, like every few blocks at, at least to kind of Put a pause in so a raised crosswalk at arbor at the very least would be great and then maybe another one further down the street um, i do see a lot of cyclists um, some of them just cross at san mateo but some of them uh, make a turn onto middle and then turn at some other spot so um, and pedestrians as well so just having more places where you can cross middle as a pedestrian or a cyclist i think would be useful and if we do that then might as well make it a race crosswalk and have a traffic calming aspect to it as well. 
um, that's my comment on this. Thank you. Thanks for that. I'll just note that for, for bulb outs and the image that we have on the slide is an image without bike lanes, uh, but typically they would cover an area that was parking um, is, is sort of the typical way we develop bulb outs so that if there was a bike lane, it would still remain in its kind of same space that it has uh, where the where it's adjacent to vehicles as well. But but I really appreciate those points. Thank you. Uh, since we're on the last board, uh, Nikki, Hugh, and Rich, would you like to go back to the text questions and answer some of those? Happy to do it. Sounds good. Let me see where we left off. Uh, this question comes from Jackie Severian. Is there a plan to reduce the speed limit on Middle Avenue? Yeah, that's a, a great question. The um, So we, we did already recently reduce part of the speed limit on Middle Avenue, and uh, there is, there's been some discussion actually. It's a lively topic at, at our in-person um, as well about the speed limits that are set uh, on Middle Avenue now. Um, and I think as I came on the first time, I, I definitely uh, heard Rich saying, you know, the what the speed studies show. Um, uh, I will say that, you know, from a sort of national and state perspective, the, the guidance on speed limit setting is, is something that's changed or is in the process of changing. And so uh, there is uh, increasing kind of flexibility about that. And that is something that we can look at or consider um, as part of this project. And I know it's been uh, in the last couple of years to our city council to consider setting different um, speed limits uh, than are set today. And, and that's certainly something that we can consider as part of this. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, the next question comes from Paul. Could we consider adding speed bumps or something similar on Arbor Road, College Ave, and Cambridge Ave, and elsewhere in Allied Arts? Yeah, I think, um, and, and I heard some of this commentary here and certainly earlier today as well, of folks being concerned that, you know, changes on one street, you know, have a tendency to potentially impact what's happening on other nearby streets as people look for alternate paths of travel um, or, or make different kinds of choices. And that's certainly something I think we want to think about um, with any kind of improvement that we would make is that we aren't just sort of pushing a problem from one street onto a, a different street. So um, that, that's really good feedback, again, and, and something that as we look at uh, all the solutions we come up with, we do uh, potentially consider things like that, speed humps um, or, or other potential solutions. Thank you, Hugh. Looks like we have one more question in the chat. Um, let's see, this is from Catherine McMillan. Everyone knows some regular elderly walkers, sometimes multiple times a day, who are unable to cross middle and are forced to walk up and down in the bicycle lanes. Are homeowners permitted to use the public right of way to extend their yards? Uh, the south side is not usable for a large section of middle. So I wonder if it's worth pulling up the slide that shows the city right away today, because actually the city of right of way is uh, uh, it's on the cross section slide. Okay. And if I understood that question correctly, um, is actually um, there we go uh, wider than the street itself. Um, so it actually extends. Uh, into, uh, in this case, the parking, but also into the front yards. That's actually reserved city right of way today already. Um, but in terms of changes to the streets, um, it, I don't think we would do anything that would use less than the full width of, of um, not likely than the full width of middle as it exists today. And it looks like we have a, another question from Catherine McMillan. 
Can we consider painting a double yellow line all along middle? I came close to being hit by a young driver passing a line of cars on, cars on the wrong side of the road. I've seen people passing on the left side several times. That's certainly something we could consider as part of, um, as part of this effort, uh, painting a, a center line if, if there isn't a center line. I believe we also have a public speaker would like to make a comment. Uh, Randy Ferrando, you are now the public commenter. Thank you. Um, one thing that comes to mind, um, listening to everybody speak, um, traffic calming is obviously uh, one of the major goals here. And it seems to me what's being overlooked or at least minimized is one of the most effective tools for traffic calming is traffic enforcement. And I think it kind of speaks volumes that uh, while we have representatives from the city here today, tonight, um, I don't see anybody from the police department um, as part of this conversation. And I think for anybody that lives in this area or has lived in this area for quite some time, it's no secret that Menlo Park has virtually no traffic um, enforcement. Um, which is funny because our neighbor Atherton, there is nobody that I know that speeds going through Atherton because everyone knows Atherton police are very focused on traffic enforcement. So, you know, we already have a police department that we're already paying and it seems like a very cost effective method to do some traffic calming is to have our police force out on the streets enforcing traffic. So I'm not sure why that isn't more of a priority. Uh, and I'm sure the police are gonna come back with they're busy, but I think there's gotta be a way for that to happen. So thank you. Thanks for that comment. Definitely uh, um, a, uh, uh, an issue. And, and just to be clear, we do very much coordinate with our police department on all of our transportation related issues, projects and, and otherwise. Uh, looks, I believe, Mark, you may have raised your hand from a previous question, uh, but if you do have a public comment, you are now the speaker. That's, there it goes. All right. Um, I, I believe we have one more question in the chat from Philip. Given the increased housing plan in the area, can you please start thinking about long-term plans of widening Middle Road? So I guess what I'll say to that is that the direction that we have as staff coming from council um, is to look at uh, you know ways to provide bike lanes and potentially reduce speeds and, and provide traffic calming. We don't uh, have direction to look at uh, a potential widening um, of the road at this time. And we would need that direction if we were to consider uh, what would be a very substantial change uh, to the street at this time. Yeah, so this is um, the survey. It's going to be online, right? In a few days, a couple of days or so. This is on our, we'll be on a web page, and um, like everybody, come out and, and fill it out and give us your comments and keep participating. Um, I think we're done for the night. Uh, there's no more questions. Uh, we will be sending out information. It will be posted on the on the street regarding future meetings uh, for the. Um, complete street commission and city council. And, I, and I, I don't know if you did this earlier and apologize if we didn't already, but just to be clear about kind of what our next steps are going from here, um, you know, this is great. We got tons of input tonight, uh, as I say, two sort of parallel events. Uh, really appreciate everybody's time coming out, participating, giving us your thoughts and ideas. That's all super helpful. We're recording it all. When we do it this way, it's great. Uh, you know, because we get the recording, but also recording the things people write down, you know, we need to take a full accounting of that, use that information to shape, you know, potential options that we can then bring back uh, to the public, we can bring it back to our Complete Streets Commission and bring it back to council 
um, you know, down the road. And that, that's sort of the end uh, of the sort of decision-making process, but there will be, you know, additional uh, opportunities to, to weigh in and contribute to this um, as we go forward. Um, and obviously a lot of interest and enthusiasm uh, from the community, which is always great to see. So we appreciate all your time and effort uh, participating in this and uh, look forward to be in touch with, uh, with all of you um, as we move forward on this project. And, and you can also sign up, I think, on our website for updates. Uh, so if you haven't already, uh, please do certainly get in touch with us um, uh, so that we can uh, answer any questions that didn't get answered um, as well. I'd just like to add really quick, uh, I believe that there is also a survey that should pop up uh, as soon as this meeting ends through Zoom. Uh, so if you'd like to send your thoughts in that way as well as getting this survey off of our website, that would be most appreciated. Thank you. So I think that'll wrap up the meeting then. Yeah, thank you all for joining us tonight. We very much appreciate the feedback. Hope you have a good night. Thank you.